Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. I'm T Captain X, and today we're going to focus on improving in Warzone ranked and cover some areas that a lot of people are constantly making the same mistakes over and over, and it's preventing them from ranking up and gaining more SR. So, number one, you got to talk about the early game first. The way the SR is divided out, how you earn SR in ranked up. Um, it's very favored upon placement and getting kills in the end game when there's 21 squads or more up so basically in the early part of the game you're only getting five points per kill and this isn't a ton unless you're going absolutely crazy and getting a ton of kills it's really just not that much in the grand scheme of things so because of that it's going to be a bit more important to focus on landing in a somewhat safer area you don't need to land in an incredibly high area and getting your loot and just getting enough money so that you can prioritize buying your loadout first before you start pushing everybody. Now in the lower ranks, it's not as big of a deal if you're gonna go into a game, if you're gonna wipe early because there's a very low deployment fee. As you get in the higher ranks, you are going to start at a negative SR and you have to earn that back. So if you're wiping early, you're gonna have negative SR games and, that, and that's gonna really prevent you from ranking up quickly. So for us, we picked one spot and we landed there all day and we memorized that we had the loot spots down so that we could all land loot our, our same little area safely and then we are getting a vehicle and we are going straight to the closest buy station to buy our loadout now once we were buying our loadout we were of course also trying to get uavs up it's very important if you have that extra cash flow money get a uav up and start going from the next place to place and start trying to isolate these teams but what's even more important is i see a lot of people that are just pushing anything they see someone and they push and they just go and they're putting themselves in bad situations you gotta remember in ranked play that teams are going to be a lot better overall they're going to be playing as a unit there's going to be people running ghosts and you don't want to just full send into absolutely anything because again then you're going to be going to the gulag and then bam now you're kind of starting back and regaining in ranks going to be a lot harder than regaining in a normal public match lobby now in this situation we had just popped a uav and we see there's a team on the buy station we don't see anyone around us it's early game we got loaded early and we're like you know what this is a perfect time for us to go push and go get involved here but again here, it's very important that we're not just full sending into anything. And here you're gonna see that I am pushing up the ladder, I'm taking high ground, and I'm taking my time here. My other two teammates stay together because there was one single person on the buy station. There was another guy separated, but watch how I just come up here and I take my good old time. I'm not running in like a maniac and this guy's actually gonna, grow, gonna run right in front of me. Bam, easy kill. You want to really try to put yourself in these situations where you're not going for these 50-50 kills. You want to always take the fights early game that are your best favor, whether that's holding people out of storm, maybe that's third partying another team, but you don't want to just get too risky essentially in the early game because you're not getting enough points where it's really worth risking. In this situation, we're, we're getting down to the last player. We're completely swarming this as a unit and we're good to go. Now, what I really want to focus on for the majority of this video is the end game, because again, that is where you really rack your points up. So we're going to break down a few different end game situations. So here we're in six circle. Gulag is closed. We've got a team out in the distance. Now I've been sniping. I've been the one person on my team that's sniping. I think it's important to have that dynamic where one person is sniping. The other two are running ARs. Now, as we're pushing this team, look, we are, you know, all three of us, we are right here. I'm in the back as I am the sniper, and that's kind of my role is to stay a little bit more back and take these shots. But I want to break this down because this is a perfect situation of playing as a team. Got a player here who's running across here. And as I do, I get some, I, I try to get some shots, but I don't get any. I'm going to go and watch how I start to pre-aim. I'm already starting to aim my gun as I'm coming around this corner, and I happen to aim right where this guy is. Now, I'm going to get him down, but... Look over here to the right. We get this one down, but there's a player to the right. He's already shooting at me. Now, if I were to take this fight and just try to kind of ego child this and immediately look over and try to shoot this guy, there's a good chance I lose because I've already taken damage at this point and I still have to adjust my aim. So we get behind cover. We take our time. We're going to play it up, but look where my teammate is. My teammate was right there ready to trade and basically switch spots for me because he doesn't need to reload. He's fully plated. He's going to get one of the, that second player down. And then I'm able to retrade once I'm plated and I get the third perfect situation of when you're taking damage, you are not over committing and putting yourself in a 50 50 fight. You're letting your teammates come in and you have to play off each other and build that chemistry. 
Now, we've got another team over to our left here. I'm going to end up missing some snipes. It's all good. I've got to get into zone. One thing that's also very important is you don't want to hyper focus here. My teammates are looking over on this left side here and I'm I'm looking that way. I'm helping them, but I'm checking the right because I don't want to I don't want to get flanked by another team and get wrapped behind and that's exactly what starts to happen. And so now I'm able to take some pressure off from this right team as my teammates kind of focus and trap this other team that is basically on the edge of gas. Now they're going to end up making a call out here and they're going to say TCAP, we need your help. So I come over and I'm basically able to help finish off this last guy who is kind of hiding in this building here. There we go. We get the team wipe. Now we've got a moving zone. Mo zone is moving into water. There's been a lot of these water zones in the early uh, end games of Warzone ranked, making things pretty hectic. The thing to know about the water is when you're underwater, you're nearly invisible. It's very, very hard to see you. Uh, and if you don't have a pistol, you can only melee here. So I'm playing off what cover I have trying to get downs here. I am able to get a crack and then I'm able to follow up with a finish, but we get PA'd. When you're getting PA's mortars, you have to move, immediately move. If, you, if you're waiting too long, they're going to end up getting you. Perfect example of I'm underwater. This guy doesn't see me because he swam above me. And I'm just going to go up until him until I can either melee or until he pops up and I can shoot him here, like, which is what happens in this situation here. Now, this is a very hectic end game. There's a lot going on and I'm able to just keep swimming and stay under people as I'm able to keep meleeing people here. Down to four teams left. One thing is important to keep a note of here is how many people are left here because getting to third place or higher is when you really get a lot more placement points. So in some situations, you might be the last on your team. You might not have a good chance of winning, but you might be like, hey, just hide until you can get to third place simply because you're going to get a lot more points in those situations. Now, I was trying to swim back in the water, grab some plates, which I was able to do. One of our teammates did go down. Tacos went down. However, Joe is able to revive him. Now, I've got a kill streak. It is a... 3v2 situation it's us three versus two left here i'm looking at where zone is going i'm staying underwater so i'm invisible remember you have this new oxygen thing of how long you can breathe and i'm seeing shots to my right and i want to use this pa now look where i'm peeing this guy is to my right but i'm peeing the landmass because guess what where this zone is going that's where he's going to get forced to go and that PA is, uh, it's basically kind of the highest chance of probability of actually hitting someone. Although, and I, and I believe I do get him with the PA there. I'm not sure if the bullet or is, if it was the PA that got that one. But again, the PA is huge in these end game situations, especially if you don't get a zone pool. This zone, it wasn't, it was kind of a 50-50 zone pool. But if it did pull to them, the PA or mortar could have been the winning factor. Last guy, we're going to absolutely swarm him. I've got drill charges, get him weak. Joe's going to push up and we're going to get the dub here. Now let's move on to another end game here. This one's finishing in Almaz or uh, in a, a village, I'm sorry. And again, look at what we're doing. We are taking the high ground here. Always, 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 when you have an option, you want to be going for high ground here. And again, I am sniping and I'm seeing a lot of players to my left here. But what I'm going to, even though I'm not using a one shot sniper, the fact that I have a very high bullet velocity sniper that has a fast fire rate, I'm able to keep pressure off my teammates. If you look at the mini map up here, my teammates are looking this way out and they're focusing another team. And I'm able to stay back a little bit off them and focus on the left from a safe place of cover. Very important that you guys are not all hyper focusing on one direction here. I know you guys want to get your kills, get your SR, but you're going to do much better as you guys play together and you each kind of have your own roles. So as my teammates are focusing to the right, I'm staying back a little bit and I'm keeping pressure off them because these guys cannot peek without me uh, sniping them essentially. And it allows my teammates to kind of do their own thing. Now, as zone is starting to move in, I'm going to keep working in here and I'm trying to get some people crossing. Unfortunately, not able to get this guy, but just because I'm breaking plates here, I'm forcing them to plate up. I'm taking them out of action for, for, for a few seconds and I'm making them waste their plates. Again, I'm getting a lot of three plates broken here. I know some people think I'm crazy for running the signal 50, but I truly believe it is the best sniper for ranked. If you want to watch that other video, I recommend you do that. And if you want to get better at Warzone, know the best loadout settings, consider leaving a, uh, consider subscribing to the channel because that's the goal of the channel here is to help you guys get better. I'm able to get it down here. Unfortunately, I don't have a self or a, a streak, a PA to get this finish, but this might be a situation where you wouldn't even want to call that PA because likely that guy crawled underground or crawled in cover and you don't want to waste that precision. 
So I'm able to get a very important snipe there as that guy's jumping here. Uh, again, notice how I am staying farther back from my teammates and I'm kind of focusing on different areas as my teammates are focusing a uh, completely different direction here. Now, zone's about to pull and this is where rotation is going to get very important. We are going to end up going early here because this, these other teams are focused on other areas. And thankfully, I do have a gas mask, not a durable, but I am able to go in here, play it up and avoid some of these bots and make it to the next kind of point of cover. My teammate did go down. I'm able to tap him and prevent him from uh, wasting his self revive. And I'm able to wait for gas to, to come up here. Always, always, always want to try to rotate early when possible. Um, it's, you know, rotating late is, is kind of only your last ditch effort. We're able to do that here and nobody is going to come this way because they're going to stay up high ground across from us, but we're still safe. And now we're starting to look, okay, now we have a bad zone pool. This zone pool is pulling away, but guess what? We have smoke grenades. So one of my teammates is going to smoke out to the right so that we can make a, a wide left rotation here. And again, we're going to try to look to take high ground. Always, always, always when you have the option. You want to take high ground and fight top down here. And because we rotated early, we're able to do this pretty safely and kind of avoid the, the a lot of the fighting here at the end here. So this guy is going to try to make a rotation out of the open. Bad timing for him. And we're able to team try him and get him down here. Now it's down to just one player left. And again, we're just holding the high ground here. We're all looking different directions. We're not hyper focusing, but we're still playing together as a team. And Joe is going to end up finding this last guy here in a second and be able to fry him. So... Another dub here. A lot of that is, again, there, it's all about making these safe rotations, not oversending for these kills, and simply playing smart at the end of the day. That's how you're going to get better at rank. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day. See you in the next one.